Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of The X-Files. Last episode we had Deep Throat, uh, which was another mythology episode. We learned a little bit more about kind of how close they're getting to some secrets already and clearly the government aren't happy about it because they've had to go into Mulder's mind and have a bit of a dabble and make him forget some things. <laughs> uh, this episode is Squeeze. Now anyone that's an X-Files fan that's watching these reactions, you'll know Squeeze. <laughs> I'm not going to say it in every video, but it has been many years since I've watched the show. I've done a, a watch through of the whole show. But even so, I have so many vivid imagery from this episode in my head. I won't spoil it right now in case you're watching along with me, but images such as a scene in the bathroom near the end, something that happens there. Um, I'm sure there's a shot at some point in the episode of like a vent, like a little grate, and someone's obviously inside the grate unscrewing the little things but how can they be in there it's such a small space so essentially the episode is about long and short it's about this guy who can squeeze into small spaces that's all i'll say to be watch it but there's a shot that is stuck in my mind so vividly and i think it helps that the box set that i have of x files has like that is one of the pictures on the front of it of the guy, the bad guy in this, was called Eugene Victor Toomes. His eyes in like the sewer grate, or the sewer, the hole where the water goes into the sewer, and that's always been scarier to me than Pennywise has, because it's always a similar sort of shot, just like where Georgie goes down and Pennywise pops his head up. Uh, you'll see it in a minute, hopefully, uh, when I watch it. But there's a scene where Eugene Victor Toomes is in the sewer and his eyes are there. But yeah, it used to be just a really creepy image. I'm hoping it's still as scary. So to find out, let's jump into episode three, Squeeze. If you've never watched X-Files before as well, this is their very first Monster of the Week episode, which X-Files do really well. Mm. I think I've just got PTSD from when I was a child for this scene. No, I don't like it. I just want to like, kind of go like that. Oh, it freaks me out. It really does. Oh, God. Like I say, it's just a memory of watching it when I was so young. And I think it's traumatised me ever since. <sighs> Hi, honey. It's about 8.30 and um, I'm going to be here for a while. The presentation didn't go so well. Call me. I love you. Bye. I don't think you're ever getting out of that office alive, my love. <laughs> this is a shot. Oh. It's weird that such a simple shot has stuck in my mind for so many years. It just scares me. Like, no one should be able to fit into that vent. Hi. Poor guy. <laughs> Even like the little, the, is it like violins, is it? <laughs> the, the little noise. It's creepy ass man, creepy. This is what to me was quintessential X-Files. Was the stuff that would scare the shite out of me. Each victim was found with their liver ripped out. Eating liver with my father being kind of not here. Bare hands. This looks like an X-File. It's not going <laughs> to I'm going to solve these murders, but... Can you imagine how painful like you having your liver ripped out with someone's bare hands? Just the sheer force, I'd have to... Mm -hmm. want me to ask Just makes them even scarier. Mulder, look, Colton plays by the book and you don't. They feel your methods, your theories are... Spooky. <laughs> spooky Mulder. Do you think I'm spooky? I don't think he's spooky, because he's Sorry, I'm usually late. right. We just but I guess if you don't believe in that kind of stuff. Tom. Other than the window, it's the only way in and out. That's one long ass fingerprint. This is the 
print I took yesterday from Usher's office. Are you saying these prints are from the 1960s and the 1930s? And fingerprinting was just coming into its own in 1903, but there was a murder involving an extracted liver. You've lost her. Well, he's out. Murders every 30 years. <laughs> Then, that, that, that this is the work of a hundred year old serial killer who's capable of overpowering <laughs> a healthy six foot two businessman, and he should stick out in a crowd with 10 inch fingers. Look, <laughs> it's quite interesting, I guess, the dynamic that the government want to hide him and they want him stored away in the basement to do his own little spooky control control things and not get involved, murders. but they won't fire him or make him redundant because legally they probably can't, you know. It's quite interesting that they're, they're stuck in that kind of chair of checkmate. So far the liver possesses regenerative qualities. It cleanses the blood. Yep. The taking of this trophy is the transferring act for the killer to cleanse himself of his own impurities. I'm Darling, it's close, but you're not right. <laughs> what am I looking at? Oh, vent system. Mm, and the really creepy violins have kicked in. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hi, you creepy bastard. Didn't the actor get married to like someone really young in life? Like, when he's in like his 40s, 50s, and she was not. I think another right actor. Because I'm sure that she was on Celebrity Big Brother in the UK. I think he made like a guest appearance. Yes. Is it your intent to lie to me about anything here today? No. He's so creepy. Were you ever enrolled in college? Just the tone of his voice, the way he speaks, the way he stares. No. He's really well acted. No. Are you over 100 Liar. years old? That must be a control <laughs> question. I had her ask it. No. Are you afraid you might fail this test? Well... Yes. Because I didn't do anything. Liar! Well, let me tell you, I had a reaction to that stupid question. And what the hell is yeah, but he had a reaction because I don't think he expected them to know that he's so old. I guess it's, it's, it's weird because like, obviously I know that Mulder's right. You come in. But you're trying to tell people who Tom, I want to thank believe you wholeheartedly in science that someone but in front of them who looks young is over 100 years old Tom, and has done multiple murders across that space of time. I'm never going to believe it. Obviously no match. What if somehow... <laughs> I love these like makeshift um, computer applications that they tend to use in these shows that don't work like that, I appreciate but... <laughs> How could that be? Now she's interested, because she'll know that fingerprints are unique, and yet somehow it matches fingerprints from 100 years ago. <laughs> oh god, he's just such a creepy looking guy. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Does one ever aspire again? I'm just glad that we don't have people in real life. I mean, we have contortionists, but I don't think to this level. And I'm just glad it's not a thing because would you ever feel safe if you knew that you can have a hole like that size? Oh, oh no. I've never liked this one. Um, would you ever feel safe if you knew that someone could get into your house like in such a small hole? You would just never be able to rest, would you? God. I thought it was going to come out of the fireplace. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> He maybe he came in through the fireplace, he just came in from the south wall. earlier. There's a box in the trunk here. Get it's it. funny, it's quite a common trope in like procedurals and these kind of shows where now, investigating a case that's been going on for years and years and years, years or a generational 
copycat. There's always or something like that. There's always like a disgruntled officer that's been waiting so many years to get this solved. But by then, they had me on a desk pushing papers and they wouldn't let me. This. These tomes. Of course, that was him 30 years ago. I guess it's funny as well, like, this Eugene does not care about being caught. Because he knows that it's so fantastical that he's always just going to get away with it. The old man was right. You can feel it. I wonder what that feeling's like. It's weird to want to experience that, but you've heard it from cops on true crime documentaries and you know first responders that say you walk into a scene and you just feel cold or the presence of evil and. I bet it's bone chilling, but I'd love to know what that feels like. Because I'm a freak. <laughs> it looks like the wall's deteriorating. No, somebody made it. Like a nest? It's made yeah. out of rags and newspapers. This looks like the opening. Think there's anything inside? I think it's bile. Bile? Ooh. Is there any way I can get off my fingers quickly without betraying my cool exterior? <laughs> no one could live in this. I don't think it's where he lives. I think it's where he hibernates. Oh, with it, can you imagine though? Hibernate? Just the thought Just of it. What if some genetic mutation could allow a man to awaken every thirty years? Mulder. And what if the five livers could provide him sustenance for that period? What if Tombs is some kind of twentieth century? Genetic mutant. Interestingly enough, Mulder's theory doesn't base it on supernatural. It's all based on science, so Scully should be open to the idea to entertain it because he's just saying it's a mutation which happens with radiation, nuclear oh, testing, all that kind of stuff. I'm saying on something. Watch your ass, Scully. He's coming for you. Is this what it takes to climb the ladder, Colton? Being an asshole. The then I can't wait till you fall off and land on your ass. Arsehole. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's a massive bathroom, I want one. Run, 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 run. Come on, Scully. This scene in particular, genuinely, used to give me nightmares. I think I must have watched it when I was about seven. I won't turn your back on. Fuck your duck. I knew that was campaigning in stomach jump. It's so creepy. Come on, Scully. Tear his testicles off. He can still get out of the handcuffs though, you know that. Because he can stretch himself. Oh, I don't like the sounds of him licking the paper, that's gross. The sound designer, he didn't need to go that into that much detail. <laughs> Just because he's building another nest, but would the police not take that away from him? The preliminary medical exam revealed quite abnormal development in the muscular and skeletal systems, as well as a continually declining metabolic rate. It dips way below the levels registered in deep sleep. So they can go into a Did you hear what I said, Mom? Hibern like a hibernate, hi All these people hibernative mode, hibernating mode. Spending good money on high-tech security systems, trying to feel safe. Now look at this guy. 
ਕਿ ਰਹਿਣ ਨਾ ਤੋ music sort of like halloween music oh creepy smell this found is the escape such a good episode okay i know i said it a few times before the episode and during but i feel like that's a genuinely scary episode of TV. Regardless of it being X-Files, I feel like you could just show that to somebody random who doesn't know the show itself and they'll find it really creepy because just the idea, not even necessarily the idea that this guy can hibernate for 30 years or whatever it was at a time, but the fact that this guy can squeeze into the smallest gaps and get into your home, into your property to attack you, it's scary. So like, I'm looking around now. Okay, this, this room's not too bad. There's only really a window. I don't have any vents in the ceiling or anything like that in here. But in your house, there's usually like an air, like a extractor fan in the kitchen, or there may be, I don't know. There's gonna be small holes somewhere. Maybe drain pipes they can get into through the guttering, things like that. And just it plays with your mind that if there was people out there or creatures out there that would do get into your house by squeezing through the smallest possible spaces. And I guess the the fear of it, the psychology fear of it is the psychological fear of it is not that they're small and they can get into these small spaces, it's that they're big, they can shrink down and squeeze themselves through, get back out and be like basically like for him, human size. And that's just a really creepy image. Uh yeah, he's just a scary, scary guy. I feel like Doug Hutchinson plays him really well with his monotone voice, the way he stares, the kind of lack of emotion. And that's why like it was good in a couple of bits during the lie detector scene where the the questions that he he failed at were because he wasn't he and you could see that little flicker in his eyes, like when they asked about him being over a hundred years old because he didn't expect it. So he plays him so well that just those little differences in character, you pick up with them straight away. It's fascinating to watch him play that character. Um, if you've not watched X-Files before, minor spoiler alert, he does come back into it again in season one. Uh, towards the end of the season, though, so he won't, back into it, he won't be back into it for a while. And I can't remember how he comes back into it, but I'm feeling like the ending kind of showed that he's going to easily escape from his prison cell because, like, so there was that gap where they'd probably put through food, maybe mail, if they get mail in that sort of place. And we know he can squeeze out of small spaces, so why would he not? I think what I love about this episode as well, and why I call it quintessential X-Files, is not just that it's creepy, and it's a great Monster of the Week, it's a great standalone episode, but because it's based on science as well, they're my favourite episodes of the X-Files, and it happens most of the time, where there's this creepy thing happening, it looks supernatural, this guy's elongating fingers, he's squeezing into impossible spaces, He's been around for a hundred years. But they try and put forward scientific explanations for it. So with this, it's genetic mutations, abnormal muscular and skeletal things in his DNA. All these different things where they're kind of saying, this could happen. This is based on fact. And that's what used to scare me so much about X-Files is that it's not like shows like Buffy or Supernatural, which I'm watching at the moment on the channel. It's not. He's a monster. He's supernatural. We don't know how he exists. He just does. This is what he does. Yeah, that is scary. But this is so much scarier to me, personally, that they're saying, here's this creepy, quote-unquote, monster who hibernates for 30 years at a time and can squeeze into the impossible spaces to kill you. And here's how, scientifically, it could possibly happen. Now, don't get me wrong. There's major leaps in science for it to happen, but... That's what's creepy, that they're trying to give a valid, genuine explanation and a logical explanation for how this happens. And I think that's how, as the series goes along, Scully probably gets more and more invested in the X-Files because she can explain it her way, and Morgan can explain it his way. Who's right? In this one, I believe that the scientific explanation is perfectly 
plausible that he is just almost a victim of his circumstances in a way. And I feel like that because when he got caught at the end, he looked sad. So I feel like he doesn't do this because he wants to do this. He does he does this because this is who he is. He's a mutant. He has to get livers to survive. Maybe part of it was genetic family-wise. Maybe there was another family member that was the same that taught him that this is, this is what he had to do. But yeah, because it's all based on in science and a form of reality. To me, that's what makes Squeeze really effective and scary episode. But on top of that, great camera work, some great shots of tombs, great music, the little... If it's violins, I'm not sure, but that sound effect. It's like, do you know, like they pluck strings. Like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Uh, it's a great sound design, great characters, great acting, great th- ideas. To me, Squeeze is a brilliant episode of X-Files. I'm so glad that it holds up in 2020. Yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. So yeah, let me know what you think of Squeeze in the comments below. Is this the first time you've seen it? If it is, go and watch the actual proper episode because there's bits that I inevitably will have to cut out. And it's just scary all the way through. Did you watch it when it was on TV? What's your thoughts on Squeeze? And what's your thoughts on Tombs? I'd love to know if he scares you guys as much as he scares me because, yeah, really, really creepy. But yeah, as always, my name is Scott. I hope you guys are well. Uh, here's some more videos to my right that you may be interested in watching. And thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.